My word. <laughs> Hello there. Bass. Uh, well, Hi. Bass. <laughs> exactly. Uh, this is uh, all about the bass. Hello and welcome. Hi. I'm Nathan. And I'm Lee. Nice to see you. Yeah. And uh, today, uh, this is quite an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah. We're celebrating everything Leo. Everything Leo Fender. Um, so I thought it was Leo Sayer. Leo Sayer. We could do that in the next video. Just scrap all my notes. <laughs> uh, Leo Fender. Okay, yeah. Leo Fender. So, so obviously... Massive, massive mark on on the uh, musical instrument world. He was quite a clever general. dude, wasn't he? He's pretty, yeah, yeah, pretty clever. Fairly he, influential, I think we can oh, safely say. Absolutely. I mean, we're looking at the basses, but you think just on, on electric guitars as well. Obviously, the, the, the history is, is is incredible. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, we thought we'd just pick a few um, a few of his iconic bass designs um, from over the years and uh, and run you through. And it's kind of a bit of a an evolution as we go through the years. Um, you can kind of see where he's. Where his thoughts are going, maybe, and I'm tweaking things and offering a little bit more tonally, or um, or just upgrades from from one of the first designs like this that I've got in me in my hand. So well, yeah, let's give people just a, a quick rundown of the uh, the chronology then and the history. Yes, of where it all started. Yeah, so um, 1951. Right. Um, Leo introduced the first uh, P bass, which is now um, sort of known as one of the first mass-produced electric basses. There was right. um, uh, around a similar sort of time. Probably worth to mention, obviously, 1950. Um, a couple of different name names to it, but there was the broadcaster. Uh, so the no cast, the Esquire, the broadcaster, then the Telecaster, um, which was then um, released in 1951. Also, so were they, were they all guitars? They were the electric guitars, the, the, oh, okay. the Telecaster. But right. the same year, he brought this out. Um, looking at trying to make it a little bit easier for double bass players and up, upright players. To be portable with the bases, sure. Yeah. Um, so this obviously a little, little bit easier to carry around than a massive double base. Yeah. Um, so this is this is where we, where it all started, and and obviously we've looked at a few big P bases in some videos over the um, over the months, but and obviously it's very very simple setup. Um, one pickup, one split pickup, uh, volume and tone, and and you're away. Um, and you can see, say, we'll go through how the how it evolved from there. But um, it's interesting that when he was bringing out the Stratocaster, for example, in 54, um, uh, he made tweaks on the bass designs at the same time. So okay. before then, for example, the P bass was completely flat, no contouring around here to all these sort of uh, ergonomic designs to make it a little bit comfier to play. It was none of that, like the Telecaster, just one big slab of wood. Um, and it was only in 54 when the, the more contoured, uh, uh, designed to be a bit more comfy, the Stratocaster comes out, that they thought they'd contour the, the P-Bass as well. So they've kept that design. So they cut out on the back as well. Um, but still, still a good, you know, reliable P-Bass, one sound. If you love that sound, then uh, this is the one to go for. And it's, it, it is classic when you plug it in and you, okay. you hear that tone. And that lasted for about nine years, right? Nine years before his next, yeah, the next incarnation, which was um, first, uh, introduced as just the deluxe, um, the deluxe bass, which was renamed the jazz bass oh. um, before release in 1960. So this is your jazz. If I pass that to you, of mate. course. So this is where the jazz came from. Um, and interestingly, apparently, another another reason to um, broaden the sound. Obviously, you can see here there's two pickups rather than the one in the P bass. Um, there's a few other things that were, were changed. The, the neck was made a lot thinner, um, so it's a, just be a little bit more accessible for most people. Um, the original design in 1960 was actually just two uh, stacked pots, so you had the uh, the volume and tone for each each pickup stacked. Um, okay. But after a few years, they they got rid of that and they decided just to go one volume for each pickup and an overall tone, and it's stayed like that pretty much ever since. So it's almost like they went backwards then. Well, yeah, because yeah, because actually, so instead of having individual tone for each pickup, you just got is, one tone for all of it. Yeah, which is which we think actually, I don't know what why that was, why that was done, but we've seen recently on the Flea P, uh, jazz bass mm. that's come out. That's got it is more of a sixty-two style jazz, which has still got the six uh, the stack pots. Okay, um, and you were saying something interesting about the why they decided to stick this on the back. Yeah, so I thought initially it was just obviously to open up the, the scope of the sound and. Um, and brighten things up a bit, obviously in in uh, in the bridge position, because um, the strings are a lot a lot more tension down this end, so you get that natural, more brighter sound. Um, but actually, it was for a reason, because in 1957, 
Rickenback have brought out their um, their base, or I think back then it would have been the 4001 or the 4002, one of the first incarnations of their 4003, as you know now. Um, but, but apparently the attack and the brightness of that base really inspired Leo to, um, to, to try and bring that to his next incarnation of, of the Fender. Right. Um, so it was trying to match that, trying to match that brightness, which you, you do get. You do get that extra punch from these. Okay. Um, so yeah, there we are in 1960. So that's two real seminal sort of base designs there. I mean, they are the classics. Yeah, this is it. Oh, I mean, yeah. I heard somewhere once, correct me if I'm wrong with this, but it's about 70% <coughs> of all recorded music is, has been done on a jazz bass mostly, but obviously the earlier stuff a lot was uh, was the precision bass because it was the first one on the market. Well, that wouldn't um, surprise me at all. I'm not sure if that's the same now. Obviously, loads of different bass makes and brands, but apparently it had that much of an influence. Obviously, that's like everyone was using them. So, so uh, all right, so that's good. So anyway, and this carries on until yeah. I guess uh, Leo at some point. He, he didn't he sell off Fender or something? Is that what 65. happened? Sixty five. Yeah, yeah. So he was. I think to, to do with. Um, a few reasons, but I think his health as well at that time as well. He was had um, something that sort of his health. But he, he he passed on the company to uh, CBS right. um, in 1965. Um, so did he part company with Fender at that point, or was he still involved? Or? Um, as as far as I know, um, that he, he parted company. Um, there's a few people that came up later in his history that either worked for the Fender factory or um, CBS as it, it then became that mm. then left the business to come and join him for his later projects right um so um i can't remember the name from uh, off the top of my head of exactly that, who it was but yeah generally he, he sort of part of part of company i uh, imagine he made a few quid out of that anyway so oh, maybe yeah. he just went sat on uh, a desert island somewhere for a few years well you th and it's saying you think like in that time on the electric guitars as well obviously we mentioned the telecast with the p bass but to strat in 1954 um obviously made a massive impact on the world and the guitar world um but even before he left you've still he just designed the, the Jaguar and the Jazzmaster um, amongst other sort of incarnations of, of, of shapes as well that are all, you know, well and well and known and loved now as well today. So a um, oh. lot more influence on just the bass as well, obviously the guitar world. So then he crops up yeah. later on now, we're, we're in the 70s. Yeah, so 1976, the first, so um, uh, a little bit before that, he set up a um, sort of the Music Man company. Um, and um, Sterling Ball, um, who still works for early, part of the Ernie Ball Brothers now, Ernie Ball Company, was um, uh, helping him design some of the first Stingray bases. So this is um, this is actually an Indonesian version of the full American-made um, Music Man Stingray, only because we tried to pick something of all similar value. So these were all about six, seven hundred pounds. The Mexican-made Fenders now. Um, yeah, obviously we, we haven't Indonesian. picked like authentic replicas of the first of each one. No, we, no what, what we've done just uh, for for really your benefit is, is pick sort of the modern equivalent of a, each of these bases. Yeah, that are all around the same sort of price. So it's yeah. about six, seven hundred quid. Is it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so yeah, no, no more than that. Uh -huh. um, and these are an Indonesian-made Stingray, Stingray base. So okay. Um, so this is where it, it, he came. He came to. So after a few, yeah, a few prototypes. I think we've we've. You might have seen another video. We've we've tested prototype number twenty six. Yes, what that was the new old smoothie. Check out for that video. That's a wicked base. But that was one of the first ones again that Sterling Ball had involvement and in designing with Leo, um, and is now apparently widely renowned as one of the first active bases, the mass produced active bases. So oh, okay, that that was a real step forward then. Yeah, so this he's still is it. he's still pioneering. Absolutely, exactly. Yeah, still still making making his mark. Um, this is a three-band EQ. The original had a two-band EQ, which again, on that old smoothie video, you'll see um, just the bass and treble, but this is bass, treble, mid-frequency, and the volume as well you got on this. Um, so yeah, a few different designs. This is quite a cool one. We've mentioned before, this was sort of uh, introduced into the Stingray, so the truss rod adjustment right down the base of the neck here. Makes it a little bit quicker, a little bit easier to, to adjust. Um, that was that was introduction. Obviously, the big active humbucker was just one big, um, step on from the from uh, pickup design and, and yeah. bass in general. Because so the yeah, Stingray's got its own unique sound, hasn't it? So. Oh, it has. Yeah, yeah. Which um, uh, again, we've, we've touched on, but it's got a very, very full, but very um, percussive sort of high end to it yeah, from the pickup. You know, yeah. Uh, um, so that was mid seventies. So yeah, he's come up with yet another stunner. Another. So he's not doing bad. So not far. doing bad. Not doing bad for a man. So something happened. 
And then they, what, did he part company with them? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it was a bit of a falling out with, with Music Man for whatever or whatever reason. Okay. Um, and yeah, moved on, moved on. All right. Um, to uh, his next company, which was GNL, which was George Fullerton and Leo Fender for GNL. Um, George Fullerton had some involvement with Music Man, I believe, and uh, Fender previously. I'm not too sure to correct me on, on that. I might be wrong on that, but he, he was involved in the previous designs, previous companies. Um, so yeah, he was. Um, he, he helped instigate the the birth of GNL as, as the brand. I believe the trip, the first bass came out. They were still made in the American Fender factory or on the same avenue as the Fender factory in California um, back in the day. This in particular is an Indonesian made now. Uh, made made version and the first one of these came out in uh, 1980 I okay believe. yeah um so that were where you're um you've seen that next next step only a few years later i think only four years yeah from uh, starting off the active active base world Absolutely, um yeah. into this and this um i'm not too sure if this is actually the first setup or of bases um i believe it is very very similar but this is um, next level for, for electronics. So you've got real, um, yeah. real loads and loads of options in here. You've got bass, treble, volume, um, as normal. But then you've got a pickup selector, three bay pickup selector. You've got active, passive, uh, sorry, no, um, series parallel switching. Okay, what so does you, that mean for idiots like me? So you can either have the, the pickups running one into each other or yeah. both at the same time. Okay. It just, um, just gives you a, a subtly different, slightly tone, different yeah. sound. Yeah. Okay. And then you've got a three-way preamp um, uh, kind of sculptor, so you can really sculpt your sound okay. um, before you then start messing around with any of this. Right. So, loads of options. Um, so that really is that's so you can see from the precision, <laughs> yeah, which really had very little coming on from there. Very little sort of options tonally to this thing, which has just got a myriad of different sounds on it. Got everything. Okay. Well, there you go then. But yeah, so this is. Uh, Bit of an evolution of, of Leo's bass history, um, which say it's it's amazing from from one man um, really changing changing the world when it comes to us and ba bass players and, and and making it either from say just accessible and easier to play out live from a bass to to really just taking it to the limit of what you could do with an electric bass and say adding electric you know active um, electronics sure and um, yeah and but it's funny though because one didn't supersede the next it's like some people still love P basses and that's all they use oh you know, because right. if that's yeah. the sound you're after you use that loads of people love jazz basses and mm. they stick with that so you know they, they all stand the test of time oh definitely yeah definitely and it's it's a if you find that you, um, you 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 will just gravitate normally to one. You, you'll you know start hearing one sort of sound that you you love or you, you want to go for. Um, generally, it's it's probably going to be out of these these sort of designs. You know, right. there's a lot of uh, m more new modern companies that come around doing something slightly different. So like Warwick and Spectre, slightly different design bodies and more um, uh, harsh, it's harsher, but um, but uh, punchier preamps. So like maybe. Um, Large eighteen volt preamps and everything like that that really push the sound. Mm. EMG pickups. This is more of a more still in your classic design sort of thing. So right. So. Uh, all right. Well, so bearing all that in mind, uh, yeah. should we show the the guys the sort of differences in in sound yeah. between these things? Let's do it. Let's have a little play. Yeah. So let's start. Let's start in nineteen fifty one. All right. With the P bass. P bass. P bass. I'll play this. You show them what it does. No problem. This will not take long. <laughs> Won't take long. But yeah, it's quite interesting. So, 54, this became contoured, uh, like the Strat, and 57, it, it's now a split humbucking pickup. Right. They've used from 1957 onwards. This originally was a split single core. So, uh, uh, that's the only main main differences. Um, and yeah, let's show them what it sounds what like. It's this. Got. It sounds like a it's, P bass. So, just, just to recap, it's got a volume and a tone. I'll start with the tone off. Done. And the, and the only way is. Up. Let's go. <laughs> Tune. Yes. Tone on, tone on, 
head to head. Pretty straightforward. And you're done. Um, Pretty straightforward. But but say, great great sound. That real iconic chunky sound, especially with the pick. That sounds great. Tone on, volume on. Just pick. Yeah. It always sounds great. The P bass. That works, doesn't it? Yeah. It works. So let's move to 1960. Right. If you. So the jazz. Yeah. Just pull the lead out of that one. Where are no, we? No, I've got it here. Oh. Hang on. Oh. Right. You play that one. Okay. Thanks, man. Okay, so jazz okay. bass. Now uh, we've got two pickups instead of the one. Yep. Uh, and we have a volume for each pickup. That's it. And we have a tongue. Boom. So uh, we'll start off with the back pickup. Yeah. Oh. Oh, it's that. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. Sorry. <laughs> Sounded a lot warmer than I expected for a back pickup. Hit it! Hit it! <laughs> Ta-da! Ta-da! So there you go, there's your jazz bass. As you can see, more tonal options there. That's it, a little bit brighter, especially if you say back to the bridge pickup, trying to get that extra punch through. Um, yeah, sounds great. So, oh, thanks, man. No. So, Stingray. Let's show the Stingray. Right, so, here we got uh, volume. Three band EQ, bass, middle and treble, and this one has got cut and boost. That's it. So there's a little click in the middle and then you can either add less of it or more of it, bass, treble, middle and treble, whichever you desire. Ta-da. Well, let's have a little listen to that, shall we? Yes. <laughs> Sounds great. A little bit of extra treble. Yeah. With the slap stuff. That sounds wicked. Bit of top end. So, yeah. that's a pretty radical de radical departure there, sound wise, as yeah. you can see. That's taken on a different level. Because it does. We, yeah. Now we've got the active electronics, you've got lots little... more that... tonal variations. It's yep. much brighter. Yeah, that's it. You know, so for, for slap players and stuff that's obviously going to really appeal isn't it yeah too right yeah so that's that beauty that's that and now so we got this thing this and beast. now this yo yeah, oh excuse me okay so this is even more complicated still right yeah so where are we volume, so we volume there uh which one's which bass and treble i think this is Okay. Oh yeah, bass is in, treble is in. Treble, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so bass there. Volume, treble, bass, and then God. pick up selector. Pick up selector. <laughs> series parallel selector. Series parallel. And three different sort of uh, voicing. Yeah, voice is a good way to say it. So um, we'll start on, so yeah, we're starting on the top voice in. Yeah. Um, well, I'm just going to go through everything. Just go, yeah, just yeah. See so what it like, does. 
Because there's so many ver variations. Yeah. Oh, and then everything's off. Cool. Yeah. So okay, let's man. just let's do stuff and do see what stuff. happens. Okay. Uh, well, you know, that's just nuts. So you've got so, so many different sounds on that thing. Yeah. So you can see totally what he was going for. He just wanted a really versatile bass. You know? Oh, too right. And in 1980, that must have been pretty, uh, you know, pretty up there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I guess did. he was trying to compete with the likes of Alembic and stuff. Those those dudes were obviously yeah. making pretty oh, smart basses. Then. Gorgeous bass. It was stat status around then as well, wasn't that, by 80. Or was that a little bit later? Oh, yeah, maybe 80. I could be yeah, wrong. Yeah, still be later. Because obviously that's where it's kind of evolving into, isn't it? and then it's taking the, the body designs and more of the ergonomic like playing. You've maybe got the same sort of electronics and that active yeah. range, but then making the bases a little bit smaller. I know the Alembics were very, very small and uh, Well, they did great big ones as well. Alembics. Really? Yeah, but yeah. The thing was, they were so expensive. They are just our really expensive bases. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess this was a cheaper alternative. Yeah. Uh, well, so, so there you go. There's the GNL. See, uh, this that's is kind of new to me. I didn't really know much about the GNL stuff at all. Yeah. It's, so this is a new one on me. These ones, obviously, so iconic and, uh, and so sort of revered. Oh um, yeah. I'm sort of down with those, but this is, uh, yeah, this is new. Yeah, it's nice to it's see. It's not new. Obviously, it's been around for <laughs> 40 <laughs> years. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't but know a lot about it, so it's interesting. It's great to see, and and I say a lot of people that um, have got them in their hands, and especially these, these we've got them right next to the jazzes and the peas and. Um, it's just something I always tell someone, just try that at the same time. Try it, try it. Um, and it's pretty new that we've started socking them, but everyone that's got them in their hands is, is, is really impressed. Yeah. Um, so, big question. Yeah. Which one would you have? Out of them all. Let's forget uh, about price. Like, well, on, no, no, well, like, I, no, to be honest with you, I, I, would, I, I would go for the GNL. Yeah. Just because of the, the tonal variation. Yeah. Um, personally, I, I, just because it's versatile. Um, yeah, I, I think I think I'm with you. The, the more so we, we, we're playing what? around with that, I you know. wouldn't take that. I know. Yeah, really. Yeah, I, I really. really, I really think it's man. You've changed. I have. <laughs> no, I've, got fair my, enough. I've got my jazz with me. I've wanted to like compare it as well to. Uh, See, the Stingray is brilliant. It um, is. I like the Stingray. Um, it, it's but it sounds just like a Stingray. It's just not quite as versatile. As it. Although you know, the Stingray would be a close second, I think. But then again, if you want something that sounds like a jazz, you get a jazz bass. You? you do, yeah. I mean, again, all I, I hear for is that that again the bridge pickup, back bridge pickup sound with the tone off. Yeah. I love that tone, and you can get that. You can get that with this. You know, you're you're playing around. You can get those variations of it. I like the way this this plays really nice. The G. It does. Yeah, it's really does. Really, oh, like really, really easy to play. Yeah, you just <laughs> dig in and just get started. So. Yeah. So uh, personally, I go with that, um, but. It, it depends what the what the job requires, I suppose. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of say no to any of them. They're all they're all brilliant bases in their own way. No, too right. No, no I think we say it's, it's good. To, now we've got GNL in as well. We say we've, we've got this collection of bases through. Before actually, that's a, it's a great great thing to touch on because Leo Fender did it so much for the guitar world. Um, I think the I think Lee and the guys are going to be covering the guitar side of this this as well. Um, mm. Obviously, lots to talk about there, but. 
yeah, we thought we, what he brought to the bass world, which was a lot. So, um, say you want to come down, try anything, you want a bit more info on obviously the history, we'll give you what we can. Obviously, please comment if I've given out wrong dates or anything. This is, say, from my, sure, I'm sure, yes. my knowledge, probably, there's probably some <laughs> wrong <laughs> in there somewhere. But, um, but, but this is generally, so the best of my knowledge, just where we, where we are. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, come down, give them a go. So, there'll be one for you, definitely. So, uh, something for everybody. Absolutely. I think you'll trust. <laughs> I think you'll all agree. Cool, all right. Well, that's there you nice. go. There's your potty history of Leo Fender and his bases. Mm. Um, hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, this is all about the bass. I'm Nathan. And I'm Lee. Hopefully we'll see you next time. If you like the show, click on subscribe down there somewhere. Come back and see us again. And, uh, yeah, see you next time. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.